Okeechobee National Park, northern Botswana. Four and a half thousand square miles of floodplains, forests and marshlands are home to one of the highest concentrations of wildlife anywhere in Africa. In the dry season, between May and October, up to 35,000 elephants live beside the Chobe River, relying on its fresh water and vegetation. But what might be good for the tourist industry isn't always a godsend for everyone. Local businesses, schools, drivers and farms have to share their land with the biggest and sometimes most dangerous animals on the planet. Now this is one of the largest wildlife corridors in the region. And when you're moving from lodge to lodge, it's very easy to forget those flashpoints between the human and the animal kingdom. But now I'm here, you can really see that this road is just dissecting right through the middle of a, a thoroughfare, which is being used by elephants, by lion, by buffalo for thousands of years. Unlike elsewhere in Africa, where populations of the African savanna elephant have declined by up to 60% in the past 50 years, in and around Chobe their numbers have swelled. That's why Dr Tempe Adams and the NGO Elephants Without Borders have developed a toolkit for farmers living next to these busy wildlife corridors. Affordable technology and sometimes just a few simple techniques can be enough to help humans and their six-ton neighbours coexist. The toolkit is made up of a solar electrified rope that acts as a deterrent that you put around your garden or field. We have solar strobe lights that act as a barrier that goes alongside of the area you want to protect. We have a different alarm systems, which obviously will scare an animal, motion detected alarm systems. And we are trialing an organic oil that's kind of a nasty repellent that the animals don't like the taste of that we spray on trees or crops. Uh, that aren't, isn't harmful to people but can repel animals. So a whole different range of things. Um, so not one solution is necessarily the right solution, it can be a combination. Um, but yeah, it's very targeted to that individual and their specific personality and what they're trying to achieve. More than 80 local farmers have now been given heavily subsidised equipment, allowing them to safeguard their previously vulnerable businesses. Knowing that hungry elephants can't ransack their properties has given many entrepreneurs a new lease of life. Ben. Hey. Nice to meet you, Simon. In just two years since putting up an electric fence, smallholder Ben Magotzi has increased his harvest tenfold and has diversified from traditional crops like maize and sorghum into higher value vegetables like tomatoes, chilies and peppers. You managed to put up a rope uh, that has like a, a bit of a shock to the elephants to keep them away. So by now most of them are already used to, the, to, to, to that and they know what they can come through. And the other thing, we've put up lights also to try and deter them, to show them you know, the human beings staying in this area. So I think I, if I get a chance, I'll still do more of this kind of setups again and encourage more people to do that. Do you feel proud? that you've done these things to allow you to improve and create your business? And do you feel like something of a, uh, an example to the rest of the community in terms of what can be achieved? I didn't see it coming, but I think uh, uh, now I'm like, wow, I've done this. Um, and uh, I wish everyone could copy it. And then we can go far, because like I said, from here up to 300 kilometers, uh, it's just uh, wildlife active areas. So if farmers can copy set up at which they can directly benefit that, um, I think we could, uh, we can go far and we can conserve. Um, conservation will be like more of, more of importance to every, each and every person in the, in the area. Ben now sells his produce to supermarkets and safari lodges all over Botswana and has gone from employing two people to eight. He now hopes to use the profits to invest in his tourism business and plans to take guests on game drives to admire elephants, albeit from a safe distance. <laughs> 